So, Christy, now what is VAL001? VAL001 is a combination of the well-known and approved drugs prenisolone and valproate. And while prenisolone has been utilized for decades in the treatment of lymphoma, valproate is a new player in the field. Um, it has been used uh, for decades too on another indication, namely epilepsy, where it has been utilized since the 60s. Uh, but we believe that it can be effective also in lymphoma treatment. So how does val one work? Um, Valproet uh, is an epigenetic modulator and an HDAC inhibitor. And by these means, it can modulate and loosen up the conformation of chromatin and of genes, making them more vulnerable to DNA-damaging chemotherapy. And valproate can also affect the expression of genes so that more tumor suppressor genes are expressed. So what is diffuse large B-cell lymphoma or DLBCL? Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is the most common form of aggressive lymphoma. Uh, and if left untreated, a certain death will ensue. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma affects about 60,000 patients annually in the US and the European Union. Um, and the population it affects is the r- rather elderly, so that the median age is about six- 65 or 70 years. So how is DLBCL normally treated? Uh, DLBCL is normally treated with a combination immunochemotherapy called rituximab CHOP or R-CHOP, where rituximab is a uh, CD20 targeted monoclonal antibody. And CD20 is expressed on the cell surface of the lymphoma cells, which makes the uh, antibody able to recognize it. What are the problems with the standard therapy of R-CHOP? There are several problems. Um, First, it's not as effective as we would wish. Uh, About 10 to 15 percent of patients are primarily refractory to RCHOP and don't respond on initial treatment. And of those who do reach a complete remission, about 30 to 40 percent relapse within one or two years. And they are then in a considerably worse situation. Moreover, since uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma mainly affects elderly patients, they have all, uh, often problems to tolerate this rather heavy treatment. Does VAL001 have a special role in DLBCL as compared to other lymphomas? That's an interesting question. Uh, recent years sequencing studies of mutations in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma indicate that epigenetic modulators are mutated in the majority of cases. And since Valproet is an epigenetic drug, we believe that it can correct the epigenetic imbalance that is created by these mutations. So it seems as if Val001 can potentiate both the chemotherapy from the CHOP and the effect of the CD20 antibody, rituximab. How does this happen? Um, Yeah, first, uh, Valproet can decondense the chromatin, that means loosen up the chromatin, and that makes the chromatin more vulnerable to DNA-damaging chemotherapy. But uh, Valproet can also sensitize to rituximab, by upregulating the target of rituximab, CD20, on the cell surface of lymphoma cells. What is the clinical experience with val We have tested pretreatment with val one before RCHOP therapy uh, in a phase 1-2A trial of 33 patients. Uh, We performed first a dose uh, escalation study um, aiming to find uh, the maximally tolerated dose of Alproet together with RCHOP. After that, we performed a dose expansion uh, study on the maximally tolerated dose. The maximally tolerated dose was uh, established at 60 mg per kilo per day, which is a little bit more than the continuous treatment that is given to patients with epilepsy and dose-limiting toxicity were mainly auditory side effects. Could you explain more about the control groups? Well, the Swedish lymphoma registry, uh, from where we we got the control groups, uh, is a very broad registry covering more than 95% of all lymphoma patients in Sweden. And the information it contains is very detailed, so we know Uh, the treatment the patients have received. We know the risk factors they've had, such as stage and performance status, age and so on. Uh, 
and we were able to uh, closely risk factor match each of the patients of the Valfrey trial to patients in these cohorts. And one uh, cohort was, consisted of 330 patients and another of 165. And uh, the cohort of 165 patients was treated between 2010 and 2015, which is the sa same time period as when the Walfrid study was performed. So we believe that uh, this cohort is very relevant. And as I mentioned, we found significantly improved overall survival uh, of the addition of Valproa to RCHOP in both cohorts. And what were the side effects identified? Uh, hematological side effects were no different than with, when treatment with RCHOP by itself. Uh, however, uh, at high levels of Alproa, we did see uh, some auditory side effects, such as tinnitus, and at even higher levels, um, we had one case of severe hearing deficiency, uh, grade 3. So I believe that in all future trials of Alproa together with RCHOP, uh, audition has to be fo followed very closely and uh, audiograms are mandatory. And what in your mind would be competitors to VAL001? Well, to improve the arch of backbone has been a goal for scientists in the lymphoma field for decades. During recent years, uh, most focus within the field has been on a subgroup of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, the ABC subgroup. And here, agents such as ibrutinib and bortezomib has been tested, but not with, with very encouraging results. Um, in another subgroup, namely BCL2 expressing lymphomas, the BCL2 inhibitor uh, venetoclax has been tested with uh, some efficacy in BCL2 expressing lymphomas. Are there other HDAC inhibitors that have been tested with Archer? Yeah, uh, Vorinostat is also a broad in, uh, HDAC inhibitor, just as Valpoet. And it has been tested together with Archop in a phase 1-2 trial. However, here the side effects were very pronounced. Uh, and it was decided that this did, in, this did not justify continued uh, treatment in the mode that was performed in the study. So in your own words... Why would you choose VAL001 as therapy? Well, VAL001 is a very well-known uh, drug with a vast clinical experience. Um, we know the side effects. Uh, and um, um, the, the effects in our trial uh, were a bit surprising uh, to me, actually. I, I hadn't expected to see this strong significant effect of overall survival uh, and I think it would be extremely interesting to perform continued trials of Valproet together with Archop. Since Valproet is already available on the market as an anti-epileptic drug, don't you think off-label prescription could be a problem? Uh, that could be a risk for individual doctors. However, these treatments are given at institutions and institutions have to follow guidelines. And the doctors who work at institutions are also obliged to follow the institutional guidelines. So uh, I cannot see that a large scale of label prescription while pro should be uh, a real risk.